data visualization in general is really a way uh, of like, using your brain to uh, summarize the data and could be useful for communication and exploration. This is Dr. Kival Benzi, a data science researcher who recently graduated with a PhD from EPFL. As we discussed it in previous videos, Kiral enjoys creating beautiful data visualization artworks out of his data. And he claims that data visualization is a powerful tool to add to the data science toolkit. Here it's really exploration because you don't know yet and it's too hard for your brain to actually represent, imagine, 55,000 uh, data points. It's, it's too big. But as long as you can see it, as you know, you can represent it. You can use all the, the part of your brain dedicated to analyzing images, so all your visual cortex and stuff. And you have a lot of bandwidth in your visual uh, cortex. So actually, you, it's easier for you as, a, for us as humans to discriminate when we see something visually than using our ears, for instance. Doing sound localization, we don't, it's really hard for, your, for the brain, but seeing patterns, this is what we are really good for. And this data visualization applies to any kind of data. This is related, as you saw, for social network, could be for uh, music, uh, sociology, uh, biology, any, like, all domains are actually relying on visualization for humans to have cognition, perception, and insights on the data. Data visualization will allow us to see data in different ways. Crucially, it will allow us to detect structures that are specific to our data. Because the network is different, so we have a different number of nodes and different number of links and different also weights between the nodes, well, the shape of the network cannot be the same. So it means that each network has its own unique, uh, can be actually rendered as its own unique uh, visualization. But the data visualization will not only depend on the data, it will also depend on the algorithms that are used to display the data. If you compare the different artworks, you will see that all different, and that's why I call this uh, exhibition singular networks. They are singular because they are different topology structure, but also because they are rendered differently on the screen, on, on uh, the aluminum. Yes, because as you can imagine, Kirill did not place every node of his networks by hand. Recall that for the Star Wars graph, there were as many as 20,000 nodes. To place the nodes in a visually nice way, we need some automated approach, we need an algorithm. And in fact, there are many algorithms that optimize the data visualization of graphs. Some of them are really for small graphs, so let's say w less than a thousand nodes. Some are really dedicated to very big graphs, more than a thousand or a ten of uh, hundred thousand nodes. And the thing is, uh, with this algorithm, they are really using approximations at some point because it's so big that imagine that you have to uh, compute all the coordinates and all the um, forces between all the connections. At some point, you would need approximate methods. So you can just have a, a quick iteration and roughly place the node at some position. It's a real, it's a, uh, really a common uh, research area. So a lot of people are actually working on uh, how to embed or how to reduce the dimensionality and people are more specifically uh, working on creating graph layout algorithms. So it's a real whole community about this. But okay, one of the, what, the big point is how to make it scalable and uh, then how to, can you implement it in a way that's easy to use for others. So what I do is I, guess, so I either combine them or I make my own. So using the right algorithms, one can manipulate the data and get visually insightful data representations out of it. This is very cool, but finding new insights into the data is actually not QR's main motivation. The idea of when you want to create this um, data art, so this visual artistic, more artistic visualization, is to actually break their standard uh, uh, algorithm to make something a bit different and useful. So it's also useful, but the, also the, con the, the goal of the visualization is to generate emotions. And I really think that emotion matters. It matters a lot. In fact, I'd say that getting excited about stuff is the most important ingredient to finding the motivation to learn and do research about any kind of topics. In astrophysics, because we don't have... Um, it's hard to find actually real data. Most of the things that you see on communications or like papers or... Uh, videos are actually uh, visualization created by artists, so they are completely they are fake, let's say. But they, they closely match, or they, we think they match the real stuff. And here, uh, the idea of um, all this exhibition is to show 
Okay, it's, I would not say it's completely similar because this is real data, but here the, the usage of this data art is more about generating emotions than uh, doing like pure visualization to make decisions. So for instance, uh, if you were to make decisions about this network, you would probably uh, use uh, like bar charts, line plots, or things like this to have a better understanding of maybe the number of uh, connections per node and so on. But if you see it like this, you, uh, as a, let's say, more visual and let's say more artistic way, it could be a nice uh, like introduction for the general audience, for uh, scientific organization, for communication. At least you are interested. And then you can go and deep and go deep in the data, look at the real numbers. But at least, like in astrophysics, you have like an eye-catchy uh, visualization to show. I strongly feel that this is very important. Somehow, a lot of people believe that when presented with facts, people will change their minds accordingly. However, this is not what psychology research shows. In fact, it seems that when presented facts in a harsh manner that disagree with their own beliefs, people rather reject the facts and reinforce their own beliefs. Facts are not bombs that should be dropped here and there. To get people to pay attention to the facts, we should first capture their attention and then nurture their interests and their curiosity. And only then will the facts find their usefulness. However, these days, the tools to capture people's attention and to nurture their curiosity are lacking. It seems to me that artworks based on data visualization like Curves are a wonderful tool to solve this issue and to get people interested in facts. And I think this is really great for, uh, uh, could be great for, of course, science in general. So to interest the public more about knowing more about science and and, but also for in the industry, if you want to have a communication, marketing at some point, you're a bit tired of seeing all the, the same ads all over again. And it could be an, interest, an interesting way to uh, display some more artistic visualization around real data from your own company. But at least you will engage the public more because it's, uh, you want to play with the data, you can touch it, you can explore it. Here you have to realize that this is printed, but we can find exactly the same thing online or where it, can play with 3D and your 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 mouse, your your keyboard, and when you start interacting with da the data, you understand that it's really real. It's not just an artistic view of some random uh, uh, things, and this is interesting. I think and it has great potential for the future. So I hope I will recontinue really in this direction and try to make more, of course, but also encourage, uh, like, try to convince people and in industry that that this is the way to go if you want to make communication and if you want to uh, really uh, develop a keen and genuine interest in your company. So far, we've mostly discussed 2D static data visualizations, but there are plenty of other kinds of data visualizations, especially if you allow for interactions through digital interfaces. For instance, you could have 3D data visualizations that you can explore by rotating space and zooming in or out. One is 3D, but it's not actually displayed here. It's about Pokemon. You remember in the, like last year, it was the Pokemon Go Fever. Everyone talked about it. Now it's a bit down. And uh, the idea was to create this uh, new, this network of videos. So each point in this network would be a YouTube video and they will be, they are connected if they are consecutive to another in the playlist. And it's really funny because if you look at the visualization, it looks like a Pokeball. So, and, here it's really interactive. You can play online and when you double click on the point, you see the video, the YouTube video appearing. So now you really understand and realize that this is real data. Of course, it's exactly the same for this uh, uh, visualization, but on the Pokemon, it's really obvious when you t touch and you cl and play with it, that it's real data. I think this is uh, what, I what I would really like to do for all the artworks here, but also going a bit further, maybe doing some VR, you know, uh, virtual reality or mixed reality. So we feel like it's more like a video game where you can explore data and see that it's fun. And math or the computer science in general is fun. So in a nutshell. This field, I think, has a bright future uh, because uh, we're, there's more and more data. We have the big data. We have data deluge at some point. And so the problem with big, the big data is that we stored thousands of, I don't know, gigabyte, exabyte of data, but we don't really know what to, what, what, uh, to do with this. And Learning how to develop uh, techniques for visualization can really help us making sense of all this uh, big data. So I think it's uh, also one, one of the ways uh, of using visualization.
know, it's not about just um, plotting a bunch of numbers. You're drawn to this thing because it looks cool, then you realize what it is, then you want to know where it came from. Here you would have Luke Skywalker and this blue uh, Yoda and all the famous characters.